So, where are you going to get your protein? Ready for some audience analysis? Okay, the, you may have seen this 25 years ago, but the punchline was, uh, you know, this is uh, where the lioness spits out the, the, uh, the uh, tofu antelope, <laughs> okay. Do vegetables have protein? Uh, can vegetarians get enough protein? Uh, and, you know, this, it, and of course, the answer is, where do horses, giraffes, all, all these large mammals, where do they get their protein? They get it from vegetables, of course. Okay, so which of the following is c correct about protein content? Chicken is the same as pork. Beef is the same as peanuts. Egg whites, same as almonds. Quinoa, cashews are number five. Okay, and for, for every physician in the group, uh, I'm sure you're raising your hand on number five. Uh, it's important to realize that uh, chicken actually does have a lot of protein. It's more than pork, uh, it's more, it's slight, it's a little bit more than beef. Beef, the answer, which was correct, by the way, was beef and peanuts are the same. Okay, and so almonds, uh, a little bit less, cashews, quinoa, and bring up the rear, egg whites. So everybody's saying they're doing egg whites for protein. Yeah, they're getting some, but they're not, they do better with cashews or quinoa. Okay, so... <coughs> The protein content, you know, when you're getting it from animals, you're also getting a lot of other things that I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about. TMAO is one of them. It's, it's, if you haven't heard those four little letters, uh, you really should focus on it. This is uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, 2012, Stan Hazen, Cleveland Clinic, talking about meat, uh, eggs, and cheese going in and being turned by the gut microbiota, uh, the bacteria, into a compound, trimethylamine, which then gets converted to trimethylamine in oxide, which promotes heart attack, stroke, and death by accelerating plaque formation, making the plaque upset, uh, hemorrhaging, and then making the platelets in the bloodstream sticky uh, so that you make sure that you clot that, that pla plaque off. It's been associated with uh, heart attack, stroke, and death. Now, the higher it is in your bloodstream, the more you have these issues. If you have heart failure, it's associated with worsened outcomes. Uh, that's meaning, so meaning that everyone uh, who, is, who has heart failure very clearly should not be eating any animal products because you want to reduce your, uh, your TMAO levels uh, to have your best survival. Uh, what's the mechanism? You can, if you look at the slides, if you get them, uh, if you're interested in this, or you can just Google it, it's uh, carnitine, it's betaine, it's phosphatidylcholine, all of them get produced, uh, are, are uh, converted to TMA, which then becomes <coughs> TMAO uh, in the liver. And so there's actually um, good data on chronic heart failure. Very recently, a publication on acute heart failure. Same idea, the elevated levels were associated with a very poor prognosis. Now, you're in New York, and so you're probably familiar with the fact that there uh, is a, a, a group working at this at, uh, at Mount Sinai saying, we're going to, based on this TMAO stuff, we're just going to remove the, uh, the animals from the heart failure diet and see what happens. And uh, this was, I don't believe it's a full publication yet, but it came out at the American Heart Association. Uh, Dr. Lara, it got a lot of uh, press coverage that people who, with heart failure who were eating a vegetable, diet had a 28% reduction in the risk of uh, developing uh, symptomatic heart failure and admissions, and it has an impact on, on mortality. Now, it's, if, if you weren't convinced by now that you shouldn't be eating animal products and red meat, you'll love this one. This is a young man uh, at the Karolinska, uh, and I pulled this one up because it was so remarkable, published a year ago, and I was just staring at this graph. This is the number of articles saying that meat is bad for you, published in 1970, then 75, and, then, and it gradually increased until the last year before he published this. It was 450 articles. If that isn't a massive amount of data that should be changing people's behavior, I mean, what is? And so he actually read them all, okay, and summarized uh, statistically what the effect of meat versus processed red meat is on the things that we think we could avoid by not doing that. That's diabetes, stroke, and that's both ischemic stroke, that's where the blood flow is down because of a clot usually, or hemorrhagic stroke, where the uh, blood vessel has broken. Uh, coronary heart disease, heart failure, 
uh, male and female, and all of them were associated with meat intake. Um, and the very, very worst was processed red meat uh, association with coronary heart disease. Again, very different data set, still very true. Thank you.